All right, this is Sully and I invite us to the Hollywood Times. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Sully. Hi. I love the cinematography. Can you tell me more about it? Robert? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a very young guy that's um, my, my camera geek. And um, we we used a, a lot of different devices. Are you familiar? I don't know if you're familiar, but we used a Movi device, which is like a, a digital dolly when we shot the Pride Parade. And it you can move all over the place, but the, the shots come out very, very smooth. And so that was perfect during the parade. We were able to get low shots and higher shots when Michael and David were in the car and uh, things of that nature. Um, we use Sony equipment and uh, we're just really pleased with it. I also love the score. So upbeat, can you tell me more about that? Um, sure. Uh, we were blessed to have one of the various or two of the various fair members uh, step up and create the original score. Uh, Stephen Clark and Andy Cowett are both composers. And um, yeah, they I, I believe that they're both fans of the quirky uh, bells and xylophones and, and plucky sounds that they created. Um and I think it fits it fits perfectly with perfect with our film. I think Andy focused on sort of the more upbeat passages, the music for that, and Stephen on the more heavy stuff. Um, and I think it really gave a nice flow to the movie to be able to to pull back from the hard stuff um, and have a laugh and then get back into it. I thought the music was was great. Every time I hear the film, I, I like the music even more. How long did this film take to come up with? Well, it, it was a it was a journey. We started off with a short film um, back in what 2017, and the short film uh, the short film came out and was in festivals uh, in 2018. And during the shooting of the short film, I realized that we had a much bigger story when Michael and David started letting me know about the the activism that they were involved with and uh, their their various uh, life stories. Um, they were they were very different by the time they came together, but yet uh, like like so often happens, um, especially for you know LGBTQ folks, um, our path isn't always the same as uh, as the general public. And so uh, the meeting of these two artists through the uh, AIDS epidemic and um, up to the present uh, was was very fascinating for me. So we actually had a second version that uh, came about because of COVID. Um, we weren't able to finish the feature film because of COVID shut it down. The end of our film was going to be David painting the mural. But uh, he had to stop painting. So we uh, we were able to show it in 2020 during lockdown on PBS. And we were able to uh, show what we had up to that point, a 56-minute version. And uh, once the restrictions were lifted a bit, David was able to go back and finish the mural and we were able to tell the story of the two of them and how they got through COVID, the second pandemic that they'd been through. So uh, we started, that's how that all came to be. We started nearly 30 years ago and basically we're doing the, the same kind of thing. Uh, it just has expanded. So the film coming together out of that was um, uh, just a wonderful experience to actually find a director who was on the same page color wise and and you know oddity wise and um it just really felt like we could just be ourselves in this documentary um which i think is is you know <laughs> a, a good thing to accomplish um so robert and rudy and nick they they all made that possible by just sort of coming into the group and um 
You're just shooting it from within. Can you tell us more about what went into the storyboarding and stuff like that? Because that was awesome. Shall I talk about that, Michael? Sure thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, their story, uh, their story was easy to tell. Um, you know, we told it, we told it chronologically. And um, there were some parts of it that were that were difficult to to tell because um, one of our characters in the film, uh, Mark Trevorrow, actually knew David in New York before David and Michael ever met. So they didn't really have any photos or footage from that period. So how how do we make that happen? How do we make David and, and Mark meet in New York and if you see the film, you'll see how we accomplished that. But um, it was pretty easy to tell their story because of the wonderful documentation that Michael had um, uh, from the get go. You know, they, they started photos early. So the documenting of their relationship began when they got together. And that was easy to tell. They also both had had footage from, you know, their childhoods. And Michael had been documenting counterculture in the 1980s and was able to share those images with us. So it, it, it was an easy story to tell as far as storyboarding because it was just their story. And they, they had a lot of documentation. Um, so we were blessed uh, with a wealth of... Um, imagery from the past um do you guys have any pictures lying around any pictures yeah of costumes oh um <clears throat> they look somewhere um, we can track something down um not on hand at the moment i can't access them digitally um we have a day we have a bunch of day book photo books but um that you know we weren't expecting to be asked about them so while dave is looking can we answer something else certainly i like the the yeah. mural dedication that you guys made for the um hiv AIDS survivor can you go into that mural sure the mural um you know that was uh that was a very big year 2019 we had um the grand marshal uh, thing the movie was premiering and I got this commission for a mural and then um, I wasn't even sure I would have the time and energy to do it but it did all work out um, uh, they liked my initial design and um, I hadn't done a public mural before although I've been a painter um, that's what I went to college for um, and then COVID hit right when we were supposed to uh, begin painting the mural and the, the uh, senior housing center it's it's located in was supposed to open in a, in a couple months um and that got delayed and delayed and delayed so we ended up having a lot more time to work on on the mural which is dedicated to long-term survivors um as opposed to people lost from from age and there's there's you know there's some really good documentaries about you know the people that were lost but a lot of the, the you know, there's a lot of survivor guilt and, you know, moving forward difficulty for the people that um, didn't succumb. Um, and I just wanted to, again, in as upbeat way as possible, commemorate, like, how all those those paths were different to the, where we are now and that people are in lots of different places because of that. Um, and it's, it's been really well received. I think it's, it, it does a good job of making people feel like like whatever's happening in their life is okay. And I do I do have a book full of photos if you'd like to see a few I can Whoa, that's pretty. <laughs> and these uh <clears throat> excuse me, these cover a range of time. We have also got this kind of absurd humor. Can you see those okay like that? Yeah. Oh that's really pretty. Yeah it's Golden Gate Park. We go on any old Monday or Tuesday in the middle of the day. If you can't do that in San Francisco, you can't do it anywhere. <laughs> Oh, sorry. There we go. I mean, it's a funny character because in one way it always uh, looks the same, and then in the other, in another way, it, they're completely different. I don't usually wear the outfits more than once or twice, um, so it's uh, 
it's very much like a, just a kaleidoscope of, of... Can you go into the color, color combinations and the decisions that you made for them? They're cool. They're totally... I, the thing David and I have in common, and I've said everything I've worked on from video to puppets to my art to clothing and costume, my medium is color. That is my medium. And it just so happened that David... Being the you know proficient artist and trained artist, um, we had a shared sensibility around color and pattern. It was just so automatic. We didn't it doesn't even require uh, any planning. <clears throat> we just do it and say, "How about this?" Oh, that's that's a contrast to this. The more contrast, the better with the elements of the costumes, the colors, patterns on top of patterns. And then we would put Mrs. Vera in nature, wearing these outrageously colorful things. So it's it's sort of like nature's warning yeah. sign, I guess. Like you, you had a lot of really great '80s looks, and I was always drawn to the kind of '60s looks. So a lot of psychedelic colors and patterns, and then we just sort of realized the if you use all of the colors and all of the patterns, you will find a way to integrate yourself into whatever environment you're in. And um, once we realized that in the photographs, it made it very easy to design ever more elaborate attempts. Oh, this one looks so cool. Full Mother Nature. Sorry, I'm sorry. That one looks so cool. Awesome. I cut, we, you I cut you off, dude. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I think I had finished what I was saying. And we use different materials. That hair wig thing is actually a bunch of plastic hair combs like snapped onto i think onto a wig it weighed a lot it weighed a lot but you know suffer for art right and then here's one of my favorites that you saw in the film it's mrs vera's nap and it was my metaphor for having an ailment that, that was not recognized or really on the radar and feeling discarded even though we're young and, and healthy and our hearts are still beating uh and i wanted to address that for people with depression uh any kind of ailments and illnesses because it's way beyond AIDS for me with this stuff. It's about your state of mind and your well-being and how we how we find our way in the world. And people really like the makeup. And for me, it's like, you know, it does draw a lot of attention to us because of the color choices. Um, but it's actually really simple compared to most people who do professional makeup. Um, it's, you know, it's almost like a, a child's version of it. And, um, but it seems to work perfectly well for the the purposes uh it makes people laugh and and think and um you know maybe um encourage them that, that they can make themselves look like how they want to because here's this character that makes themselves look like 10 times worse so you can't make yourself look worse <laughs> than mrs vera she's always going to win that contest <laughs> yeah i love that uh, i was watching um New Amsterdam, a, sh a, sh a medical drama. I was unaware of the fact that non, um, non HIV positive gay men couldn't give blood to um people. Can you, like, um, stem to me from? I mean, part of the stigma from the very get go. I mean, men that didn't have HIV couldn't donate blood. Uh I got it from a medical perspective, but at the same time, after all the years that went by and all the science we have, they still, I mean, they just recently changed that here, I believe. Yeah, you know, and I mean, it, it was one of those ongoing things. It's like, oh, again, we're being invalidated, even though the, the, the other people are healthy and women too, you know, uh, in the community. And uh, I think they did that with drug users. Uh, the, there was a little bit of profiling going on there. It's been a learning curve. I think we get much better care now than we did at the onset of the epidemic. Um, and even though politically now there's a lot of negativity, I think generally we're actually winning that argument in a lot of places that you know we're just we're just human beings just like you, and that there's no reason to categorize us off the island. I I have a question about survivors' guilt. Do people from that like age feel it like a lot it never goes away i mean i 
was very healthy. I was HIV positive at like 23 and my health was okay. I mean, I, I've been very lucky <clears throat> in terms of it took a long time to really progress where I was very, very ill. But every time I lost somebody, um, especially at that age and just meeting new people and community and boyfriends, and girlfriends and all that. And suddenly it's like, I say to people, the way I try to put it is, you're at a party with all your favorite people and then you leave the room for a minute, you come back and most of them are gone. And it's a very powerful, powerful sense of, of self-awareness that, um, you know, I cried so much in that time. And at the same time, I thought, why am I still here? Why am I still here? It, it, that resonates. It's a good question because it resonates up to today, right now. There's still that, that sense of like, why me? And survival guilt doesn't just apply to the people who had the condition that survived. Um, it affects just as much the people that were taking care of them. You know, and they, they, you know, their whole lives were altered, and like they got burnt out on things that if they hadn't gone through this process, they, you know, you know, they would have had a different path. So anyway, it's um, it's it's all about um. Uh, just recognizing that that you survived, and when we talk to people after a screening, they come up and you know you could just really get a sense that the movie somehow helped them to remember the people they've lost for what they loved about them instead of the kind of horrific nature of the demise. And um, you know, it's being it's very emotional for them, and it's 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 a great feeling as an artist to be able to connect to someone who who has something that's so hard to look at, but that your movie helped them do it. I mean, it's a beautiful feeling. Overall, what do you think was the goal of this film? And do you feel that you accomplished it? Uh, the goal of, well, the goal <clears throat> initially uh, has changed. You know, the goal at first was to to let every, you know, let every viewer experience the color explosion of the Verisphere. We made a short film first about the the costume troupe. And so I thought, you know, everybody needs to see this. And as I got to know David and Michael more, I realized, especially after talking to young people, that their stories and and their community um, matters of long of long term survivors absolutely matters, just like you said, and that they, you know, should not their experience, their their life story, which mirrors so many people out there today, especially our age, um, needs to be told, and people need to remember. And at the same time, they get a a a burst of beautiful color that you know it's it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this flower growing throughout the film and uh, by the time we get to uh the guy that uh the gentleman that is the curator at the harvey milk center who starts to talk about how mrs vera came to be you know the blooming starts to happen and by the time the the community develops around you've got this beautiful flower of expression that hits the streets once a year and uh and everybody gets to see it, you know. Even today, it used to be if if you weren't in the Pride Parade, you didn't see the Vera Sphere. But now it's public, it's televised, and there's pictures, and there's websites, and there's Instagrams, and a documentary film. When is this film out, and where can we watch it? The film it's is out. global. Yeah, it's global now. Um, uh, I just approved with our distributor, Gravitas Ventures to launch it in every English speaking territory. And that's all over Africa, Asia, uh, Europe, North America, South America. And, uh, but the easiest way to find it is either on iTunes, because most people have access to iTunes or Apple TV. And I think everybody uses Amazon <laughs> on the planet, perhaps. So you can get it on Prime, Apple TV, and iTunes for sure right now. It's also on a ton of cable streaming channels through Xfinity and Comcast and all those cable channels. It, you can get it on demand. Voodoo I, and YouTube also it's available for sale and rent. I think I saw it on and YouTube. Vimeo. And Vimeo. Yeah. It's all over. So, 
Sorry, David. All right, this has been the Hollywood Times with Robert and Michael and David. David. Yeah, Michael and David. Have a good day, guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.